experience from the Netherlands, and I'm to talk about rapid and reproducible resistance analysis for all using the AMR package 4R. I have no conflict of interest to declare. So I wanted to start with a short introduction to our work field. Um, so we're from the University of Groningen, and as medical researchers, we are also working at the University Medical Center, and we focus on epidemiological and data scientific research on new methods. It's important to introduce some bits of medical microbiology as well. So, um, for you all to understand, of course, people get infectious diseases, killing millions per year. In the USA alone, I looked it up, it's around 160,000 people a year. Um, many of those infectious diseases are caused by bacteria. Luckily, bacteria can be killed or inhibited in growth by antibiotics. But as you all know, bacteria are smarter than we like and they can become, they can become resistant. So um, bacteria are also quite on their own. They differ in both prevalence, so the kind of bacteria um, occurring in different places in the world, and they also differ in resistance between countries and between continents and states and maybe even more detailed geographic regions. So that's also important to know because doctors who treat patients for those reasons seldomly know which bacteria are causing infections unless laboratories, uh, laboratory tests are done and um, they also seldomly know exactly which antibiotics would work well on the specific bacteria causing the disease unless again uh, laboratory tests are done. So how can we help doctors treat patients without knowing this? Well, they should ask their epidemiologist or data scientists and let them watch this presentation. Another important thing is taxonomy. I think most of you will know taxonomy. Uh, here's an example of the different taxonomic levels. So from kingdom to species, there's also some in between, but these are the most important ones for now. And here you see an example for humans, right? We are Homo sapiens, genus Homo, and we all go down. Um, to the kingdom of Animalia. If we look at E. coli, for example, a bacterium, then you see it's part of the kingdom of bacteria, obviously, and here's all different levels um, until we get to the genus uh, level for Escherichia and the species level coli. Taxonomy is important because we needed to limit development of resistance. The goal for doctors to treat antibiotically is always to treat as specific as possible because some antibiotics work here, they are broad spectrum, um, which is actually the worst choice, but sometimes you don't have choice, right? Um, but some antibiotics work here, that's already better, and some work here, that would be the best choice. So how do you know which antibiotics to give if you don't know the bacteria, or maybe um, do know the bacteria, um, but you want to know it on a general level for your ward, or for your hospital, or for your reason, your region? So what must they have or know? And with they, I mean those um, people analyzing your data, data scientists or epidemiologists. Well, they should have good questions and they should be asked by other doctors, perhaps, like which drugs would work well in my hospital for treating E. coli? Or which drugs would work well in my hospital if we don't know the bacterial name? Um, they should, of course, also understand something about epidemiological dependencies and methods, like how should I define a patient's episode, right? If you get a urine tract infection in February and you get one in October again, then that's two different episodes and you should treat it as two different patient episodes. Um, they should also be able to um, select bacteria isolates that are suitable for analysis. For example, if I am treated for a bacterial infection um, in my blood, I have a systemic infection and my blood gets drawn five times a week, then I would have the same five isolates on the laboratory and results of it in my laboratory data. And you would absolutely want to um, correct for that because you don't want to um, have duplicates in your data. It's hard to unduplicate. So uh, how do you do that? And you need to have reliable reference data to be able to answer questions like which antibiotic or glycopeptides. It's a group of antibiotics, sometimes important. You know, if somebody asks, um, I would like to know how glycopeptides work or what the success rate is if I would treat with that, um, you should be able to answer it. Um, and you should also have details about microbial taxonomy, as I showed you. Um, if you don't know the order or the family or the genus of the species you have, then it's hard to stratify 
based on those data. And guidelines, of course, for determining and analyzing antimicrobial resistance. There are guidelines available, but there's no software um, that's able to apply this. Or at least there wasn't. So here we present AMA, the AMA package for R. It enables standardized and absolutely reproducible antimicrobial resistance analyses. And it enables application of evidence-based methods for cleaning and analyzing data from laboratories and hospitals. You can also use it to integrate it into existing international workflows like those by the WHO or ESNET, which stands for European Antimicrobial Resistance Surveillance Network. And it's completely independent of any laboratory information system. Besides that, it's of course free and open source. It's up to date and long term maintained for the microbial taxonomy and the guidelines. We keep, keep track of that. Um, it's also independent of any other R package. It's, it does not import any other R package, although it works very well with the Tidyverse. I'll get to that. And it's stable and fast. So we included information about uh, bugs, taxonomic data from the Catalog of Life, which is a very authoritative. Um, source for taxonomy and we included every detail of the taxonomy from kingdom to subspecies including gram stain. We also um, included information about drugs, pharmaceutical data like ATC codes, official names, official groups, and antibiotics, antimicrotics and antivirals. So antimicrotics are um, for treatment against uh, fungi and we also included 5,000 brand names and DDDs, which stands for Define Daily Dose. And we taught the package to understand laboratory output and methods. If you work in infectious diseases, this really makes sense, but um, I think I'll skip it now. We are very happy uh, that it's been downloaded over 35,000 times already since the first release two years ago, um, which is from CRAN logs, this data, um, and this consequently is a um, underestimation because it only tracks one repository, albeit a, a very popular one. And it's been downloaded from 112 countries already and we are especially fond of the fact that it's being used in HIPCs, a lot of them. So there's a list of heavily indebted poor countries and those countries do not have a lot of resources. You know, some um, organizations in those countries might not even be able to afford SPSS or uh, other statistical software, but they can afford R and they can afford our R package because, of course, it's free. And um, we're very happy that antimicrobial resistance analysis can now be done in any country in the world. So, what can it do? Well, well you can use it to coerce raw, unclean data that you get from laboratory or hospital systems. Here's an example. You see here the official name of glucosamin, which is an antibiotic, some derivation from other countries and languages, and a brand name. And brand names differ per country as well. Uh, official codes, one by ISNET, by the WHO. This is um, the ATC code used in pharmaceutical systems, also by the WHO. And this is an ID, a compound ID by PubChem. There's, of course, always arbitrary codes you find in, in systems, laboratory systems. And as a proof of principle, we added some incorrect spelling. So what you can do with our package is just cause all this to FLC, which is the abbreviation we took from ESNET as the abbreviation for this antibiotic. And with bacteria, exactly the same thing. This is Cephalococcus aureus, a bacteria, and there's, of course, known abbreviations and also other codes people think of and, and have it in their systems. And here's again some misspelling. And this is also coercible to a microbial ID we created, which is human readable. It's from the kingdom of bacteria. Here the abbreviation of the genus, which is Staphylococcus. And here the abbreviation of Aureus, which is the species. And this package is able to understand the even most severely misspelled items you can think of. So we only put this in as a proof of principle. Right? It wouldn't even say it's uncertain or very uncertain, but if you put in this in our package and would want to know the valid taxonomic name, it would understand. Because every Z could also be an S or a C, and every TH could be only a T, and 2H could also be 1A. And that's how we correct for a lot of uh, spelling mistakes. And it would still understand that it's about uh, Staphylococcus aureus, albeit with a very low score, which is based on the Liefenstein algorithm. 
But if you have a code, for example here, of this antibiotic, then you can go to any property you like, because all this reference data is available in our package. So you just load our package, and you try uh, to input something for, for the name, and here I put in a brand name, which is bold printed here, and it would just throw the official name. And if you want to know the defined daily dose of an ATC code, right, then it would say, ah, well, I know it's about flucloxacillin, and it would, would give you just this two grams that um, is for DDDs. Our idea was that you can, with the data you have, you can go from any to any, and with bacteria, same thing. So if you have this code, which is coerced from anything, basically, then you can go back to anything as well. And if you want to get the gram stain, it will give you the gram stain or the film, which is a taxonomic entry. You can do that as well. So again, you go from any to any. So how can you use it? Well, this is part of an example data set we included in our package. And it's a very regular um, health care data set, I would say, with a date, age of patient, gender of patient, and here the microorganism, MO, E. coli, and some others. And here are three um, columns with results of a specific antibiotic. So these are the results for amoxicillin, for ciprofloxacine and for trimethoprim. And I would estimate that most of you are treated at least once in their life with any of these three antibiotics. They are also very common for treatment of urine tract infections. R means resistant. So this Klebsiella pneumoniae is resistant to amoxicillin, but it's susceptible to ciprofloxacine and trimethoprim. And here we have missing data, which is also very common because you won't test on every um, antibiotic uh, for every um, bug you run into in a laboratory. So there's in medical microbiology a lot of missing data. But with only a couple of lines, I hope you understand a kind of um, tidy first syntax. Here we have our um, example data set and we group by this column by hospital data and then we summarize where we calculate the resistance of amoxicillin and with n underscore rsi we can we count the number of isolates where there's a valid uh, result so resistant susceptible or intermediate somewhere in between so here's the result and you can see immediately that for hospital a there's an empiric resistance to amoxicillin of 55.4 percent based on 157 isolates but what's more important is to look at susceptibility because that's the chance of success you have to treat your patients and you can give amoxicillin alone and you can give ciprofloxacin to a patient alone but what's very common especially in icus that you treat with two different antibiotics because you have to to be sure they make the end of the day um, and if you don't know what's causing the the um, super severe infection then um, you're better safe than sorry and treat with multiple drugs you can use that now package and here you see again grouped by hospital you see here that the susceptibility to amoxicillin is 44.6 of course it's my one minus the 55.4 we saw earlier and you see also here that ciprofloxacin is um, way more successful than amoxicillin as a monotherapy but if you combine the both you would get a success rate empirically of 92.4 percent so that's a big difference so using this package you can also evaluate treatment and give advice on uh, which drugs would work best in what way, or for which hospital, for which ward. You can also, you can group on anything, right, on, on, on hematological patients or patients with, um, I don't know, respiratory diseases. So if you want to install it, obviously you only need to input in command, or if you are in our studio, just type in AMR and you can use that. We also created a package down website with a lot of how-tos that are included in our package as well as vignettes and um, there you can read um, how this package works and what it all can do and so forth. We also wrote a methods paper about this package and submitted it to via archive as a preprint and it's currently under review at some journal. Um, yeah, so uh, we are curiously awaiting that results. There's a lot of people to thank for the development. Um, we couldn't, of course, do this alone. There are software testers from, I believe, seven different institutes in also different countries, and it was great to work with those people. If you want to contact me, please do, um, and we'll get in touch. 
Thanks for listening.